The annexation of Texas in 1845 and the discovery of gold in California turned the San Antonio-El Paso Road into a major route for freight, immigration, and mail. The fort was evacuated in 1861 when Texas seceded from the Union. It was occupied by volunteers of the 2nd Texas Mounted Rifles in 1861 and 1862 and was a staging area for Henry Sibley's push into New Mexico, but persistent Indian raiding prevented Confederate forces from consolidating their occupation. Union volunteers took brief possession of the fort in 1862 and it was permanently reoccupied by federal troops in 1867 with the arrival of four companies of the 9th Cavalry under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Wesley Merritt. Merritt found the first fort in complete disrepair and initiated construction of the second Fort Davis at its present site. Fort Davis was named for then-Secretary of War Jefferson Davis. Earlier, Davis led the pro-slavery faction in the U.S. Senate. As president of the Confederate States of America, he opposed the use of African Americans in the Confederate Army and, in 1862, declared that African Americans fighting for the Union were guilty of insurrection, a crime punishable by death. Ironically, Fort Davis is now celebrated for its notable significance in the history of African Americans in the U.S. Army. It was the only Indian Wars-era fort to serve as headquarters for both regiments of African-American cavalry, as well as headquarters for both the 24th and 25th regiments of African-American infantry. In 1880, the first African-American graduate of West Point, 2nd Lieutenant Henry O. Flipper, was assigned to the 10th Cavalry at Fort Davis. Troops out of Fort Davis performed continuous patrol and escort duty, but engagements with the Indians were rare, and the only sustained operation mounted at Fort Davis was against Victorio's band of Warm Springs Apaches. Colonel Benjamin Grierson stationed detachments of the 10th Cavalry and 24th Infantry at strategic water holds. After skirmishes at Tinaja de las Palmas and Rattlesnake Springs in August of 1880, Victoria retreated into Mexico where he was killed two months later by the Mexican military. Fort Davis was abandoned in 1891. In 1961, after a succession of private owners, it was authorized as a National Historic Site. Many of the items and furnishings in the officers' row restoration were donated by descendants of the officers and men who served at Fort Davis. Second lieutenants were seldom assigned officers' row billets after completion of the two-story junior officers' quarters in the mid-1880s. The building was strictly off-limits to ladies of the evening. These gals obviously didn't get the word. The shade of Fort Davis's blue wagon is brighter and richer than we've seen at other forts. Well, this is, after all, Texas.
The enlisted barracks houses the fort's artillery collection, including a three-inch ordnance rifle. The Griffin gun was widely used in the Civil War, but Western forts found the 12-pound mountain howitzer more useful against the Plains Indians, who called it the gun that speaks twice. Many of the buildings were kept in good repair while Fort Davis was in private ownership, but the guardhouse was among those permitted to fall into ruin. Consequently, the guardhouse is not the best preserved structure on site. <laughs>